Hello, beautiful people. We're gonna eat some filibertos and talk a little bit more about <laughs> whether or not God exists. All right. Shout out to filibertos. They're always amazing. I love filibertos. I got some rolled tacos. Some little fried rolled tacos. Oh, damn, that's a lot of sour cream. Anywho, I hope everyone's having a good Sunday. Thanks for watching my videos. I got Mr. Beef over here. But, also, thanks for, once again, for those who, you know, were really kind and commented on, on my... Oh, here you go. They put guacamole and cheese on them, which I don't actually love the guacamole. They've kind of changed it to like more of a crema based guac. So, not in love, but I'll eat it. But anyway, thank you for those. I think I got beef. Yeah, beef. Um, thank you for those who've been respectful, kind, and just here, like I said, for open mindedness opinion. Oh, I must admit. Um, you know, I said I'd stop deleting videos when I take them, but I ran out of storage space. So some of my birthday activities, I just deleted it. It was like a three hour video, so whatever. These are good. I swear I just saw dog hair. Hmm. Anyway. Okay, let's continue this conversation about the Bible if God exists, whatever, whatever, whatever. I want to preface it, though, by saying, like, what I say isn't law. You don't have to agree with what I say. More so, if you don't agree with what I say, you don't have to be upset about it. This, like, I'm not saying this is the truth of everything. This is what I believe. I'm sharing what I believe because I want to attract the right people to my platforms. I want to attract people who like astrology, who like theology, who like anthropology, any kind of food arts, like the, the like-minded people who are about what I'm about. The best way I can do that is talking about the things that I like to talk about. And you will see me talk about these things and discuss these things. As a matter of fact, one of my stream mates, um, He's really into theology as well, and I would like to partner with him to do, like, a, a stream and such about that series. Whatever. Anyway. But. I like to discuss things like this. I like to entertain multiple ideas. As I say, I don't think there's... I think there's truth to all of them. So whether you're Christian, Jewish, Muslim, whatever it might be, like I feel like I can, if you just teach me your side, I can understand it and kind of relate to it to my own way with the point of views that I have, right? Um, and that's kind of what I really think religion is, although I do think a lot of it obviously stems back from lots of things in the past and whatnot. But Really, none of us know what's going on. And truth be told, I think it's just every one of us trying to make sense and cope with this crazy thing called life, right? And it doesn't matter how good it is. It, it, it is crazy. There's crazy things that happen every day that's just straight up crazy. Honestly, these are good, but so dry.
That's okay. I got this guy right here. Look at this baby. He's just a princess in his in his soft girl era, baby. You pretty boy. You pretty baby. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> anyway. I got spudgy somewhere behind me. There she is. Ugh. Sorry, I've not eaten all day and I need to eat. I procrastinate it because I get in this like weird stage of like I don't know what to eat a lot of things sound like kind of good but I know half of those or like 90% of those my body's gonna react negatively to this illness that I have literally borderlines like eating disorder shit I'll talk about that in another episode um, not that I think I have an eating disorder but it, it severely borderlines it, so sometimes I have to be really careful with that kind of stuff. Um, very aware of that. So, when I make that video, don't start being mean to me, okay? Um, a lot of y'all are already mean to me, so... Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, is God real? Probably, but is he this big Gandalf dude in the sky? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um... Now, what I have come to the conclusion of is that a lot of us go through these hard journeys in life, I think, to bring us closer to whatever God is. And I think, you know, I was thinking the other day, like, oh, I love this energy that I have lately. And it's, it's an energy that I used to misuse when I was younger. For instance, like, I would feel so good. Things would be so, going so good. <clears throat> my job's going well, I'm happy, I'm healthy, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I'm like, oh, I want to share this with someone. So then I date someone, and then shit goes bad, right? My health goes bad, finances go bad, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, at that point, I'm like, why do I do that? I realize I have like self-sabotaging behaviors and things like that, right? Toxic things and Whatever that I had to learn through and get through. And I think ultimately, whatever you want to call it, I don't believe in the patriarchal view of a god. I think, I think they're, and let's get a little blasphemous here, okay? Let's entertain this, like, idea that if we're going to attain this Gandalf mofo going in the sky, then we can entertain, you don't have to believe this, this is just kind of some things I wonder you know, do I believe it? I, I'm like, hmm, I don't know, you know. Um, but what I do wonder is ultimately, this sounds so weird, but if we are from the heavens, like the Mormons taught, um, but more so um, we're descendants of, <laughs> sounds so stupid, aliens. <laughs> um but if you think about this, um, if God was real, like we picture him, he would be an alien. He obviously doesn't live here on Earth, okay? He lives in the extraterrestrials. Therefore, he's a fucking alien, okay? All right. So, now we've made that point clear, okay? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, by the way, argue with people. Like, I'm just trying to point things out. Okay, if you're a Christian, you're gonna be like, oh, that's fucking nuts. Like, just hear me out. Just hear me out. Okay, just hear me out. I know it's nuts too as a non-Christian. Well, that's why I laugh about it. But I could entertain the idea, right? So I wonder, at the very far end of things, like the craziest crazy I could think of, would be, we're on this planet to produce energy. Um, the highest form of energy is love, and. People think that it's being used as like a energy thing or like, um, like, you know, what comes to mind is this Rick and Morty skit, whatever clip. And I know it's so crazy because Rick and Morty is like a bullshit show, but the battery part where he's like, he's like, do you know what they would do if like 
they realized their whole existence just was based off of creating energy for his car, you know, because they were a little, a little world inside the battery. And that really just stuck with me. And I really wondered if that's kind of what the earth is, but it's not that, it's not in that sense of like, oh, like you are only born to create energy. No, it's more in the sense that like, we're meant to go through the darker sides of energy to understand the lighter sides of energy so that when we pass on through i think there's a lesson or something i'm not sure i really don't know the ends and means of everything you know like i said a lot of people i think just use religion just to cope with things um but i think there's a lot of truth to it when i read a lot more about nikola tesla and energy and things like that and with my own medical journey and my own manifestation journey that's where a lot of my beliefs kind of come from at this point because it's like it's undeniable right it's undeniable there's a source and i know i understand where there's people who are like oh god isn't real blah blah because i think they take it so literal they think there is a guy in the sky and that's what people preach the patriarchal god do i think he's real no i do not um i think you know what i i'd I'd entertain the idea, I should start saying it that way, I'd entertain the idea that there are multiple gods. So, do I think it's just one god, one Gandalf looking dude in the sky, with like, super hot pecs and arms, and like, so ripped, and like, no, just kidding. <laughs> but, do I think that's possible? Yeah. If we're made in God's image. then one of the gods probably resemble one of us and or many of us. Um, what I do know, without a doubt, I think no matter what religion, this one's a little better. But no matter what religion, whatever. There is an ultimate energy that surrounds all of us. Because, I mean, how else was... You don't even have to correlate it to being, like, a human being energy. Like, the, the Big Bang, even if it didn't happen like a Big Bang, like they said, it still requires energy to create the planet, solar system, and everything. So, obviously, there was an ultimate energy at play, right? You can say it was a guy in the sky, you can say it was whatever, fucking, I don't know, it, quantum shit, whatever. Um, there's something there, undeniably, right? And then when you start ma learning about manifestation, which manifestation is no different than prayer. And I'll get into my ways of doing it, like I've said, because I'm neurodivergent. That wasn't fucking obvious. <laughs> but I... I just manifest differently and I think it would help a lot of neurodivergent people because once again a lot of times when you see the the stuff online it's really catered to like neurotypical people so like meditating doesn't look the same for neurodivergent people you know so I've really learned how to like use what's in my favor I guess you know my abilities to my best whatever anyway someone mentioned in the comments they said what do you mean um we don't know who wrote the bible now i'm not claiming okay so here's the thing i love religion once again i i i've read the bible so many times do i know every single verse in the bible no i used to have bible verses memorized as a kid being mormon and whatnot do i anymore no i barely know like the god's love the john 14, 15, or whatever the fuck it is, I don't, 3, 15, fuck if I know, anyway, um, I'm not claiming to be, like, knowing everything about the Bible, knowing everything about God, knowing everything about religion, I'm just trying to get a conversation started, and for people who like these conversations, they will be in the conversation, they'll be in the comments, hello to you in the comments um but for those who don't like this they they won't they won't comment they likely won't even be making it to this point okay so 
it's not meant to attack you and be like, oh, your faith is wrong. Like, I, once again, I think there's truth to every faith. And because I love, ah, because I love religion, I kind of just want to know more about what different people believe around the world and what better way to do it than online because I can connect with so many people in this world ugh, just by going online and posting a video. There's a fly in here. So weird that that fly came out of nowhere right when I'm filming. If you know, you know. Anyway, I have five of these, so I think we're gonna save the rest of the three for tonight's dinner. want to do is teach people how to find an inner source of happiness and love themselves so wholly and so much that when someone is mean to them, when someone does them wrong, when someone makes a mistake and they get involved, you know, they can not have anger, resentment, and those difficult feelings towards that anymore, you know, um, and I know it sounds crazy, you know, where there's a lot of times you'll hear me refer to the Bible. Um, because there's, they are pretty much like parables, right? I think they're teachings to help people really learn how to be better humans. And I think if you learn how to um, love yourself, even if you don't do things for people, you will infect people with them learning how to love themselves because I, I say it in this way like I know I trigger a lot of people just because of how I look but it's because when you're authentic and when you truly love yourself people who are not authentic they see that because it it's literally you're holding up a mirror to them and showing them that they're not authentic so you know it's corny but it says in the bible like god will harden hearts of your enemies and stuff like that like just know that that's gonna happen like when when you become so truly full of love so yourself that you can correlate it to demons god whatever you want but it's really ultimately energy okay there's gonna people be people who dislike you because you hold that spirit god's light the love, whatever it is, and that really irritates people who so badly want to be stuck in the dark. Imagine in a literal sense, you're in a room, blacked out completely, and someone just comes and whips up the shades on a super bright day, and you're like, ah, my skin, you know, vampire kind of vibe, like my eyes. That's, in a literal sense, how people react spiritually to people who have the light of God. Okay, and this is where I believe even in racial ways, why systemically people who have the same skin tone as myself have been known to hate on a certain skin tone group of people because they see the actual light. Envy comes in so many different forms, you know, and I'll talk about this a lot because I've experienced this a lot in my life. And I, I'm trying to understand it more as an adult because I just don't get it. But now I get it. I really get it. And now I understand that this goes deeper than just me, obviously. Um, when it comes to little old me compared to the world, obviously it's so much deeper. So much more to it, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, pretty much, you know, if you understand what I believe, I really do think that the POC community are, you know, the the sun children. And I think, I think, mm, people know that. I'm just going to say mm, people because look at my, look at me, okay? I'm trying not to get dinged, but I'm also not trying to offend anyone. I'm not saying like if you are this, you're, it doesn't mean you are any less one of God's children. 
let me explain the process if it if i could if it makes sense okay this goes along with my spiritual and religious beliefs if god's real this is why i believe if there is a god this is the way it works etc etc okay so hello this is beef by the way he's the baby and that's spudgy she's the oldest okay hi the irony is he's the baby but he's the biggest she's the oldest but she's the smallest um but god prophesied and darkened the skin of people because he was proving that, hey excuse you proving that his prophecies here just take it we're gonna come true and that's where you know became in in a story sense that's what stories say of of traditional teachings in the at least native or indigenous like pima apache those are the things i just learned so i could be wrong with that if i'm wrong with it please let me know in the comments happy to always learn um but they were here to be the catalyst okay um without the dark there would be no light right and vice versa and I'm trying not to say this in like an offensive way so please like I hope no one reads more into this than whatever I'm saying because I, I I don't see it from that angle so I'm not trying to be offensive I'm not you know I'm not trying to attack anyone or anything I'm just trying to explain it to the way I see it um, but I'm trying to be cautious about it like respectful so whoever is up there sent the POC community here, we're all here. And at a point, a certain group of people skinned was given melanin. And that was to prophesy that God's things were going to come true. Like the things that were prophesied, they were going to come true. So therefore, to me, the POC represents the children of God, the sun children, because once again, if you know, there's a connection between chlorophyll and melanin, chlorophyll and plants and stuff like that. So, um, I forget exactly. I'll have to like deep dive on that, but there's some connection with it. So because plants are sentient and they eat, like they produce chlorophyll to eat essentially from the sun, you know, that's how I correlate it. So, if melanin is like the plant version of, or chlorophyll is like the plant version of melanin or something like that, then people would be the human version of a plant. Does that make sense? Okay, anyway, moving on. So, that being said, that's where I say like the POC community is really here to, they are the roots and they are here to be the catalyst to raise our consciousness as a whole as a collective doesn't matter the skin color doesn't matter the religion <clears throat> and that's how i view it essentially because a lot of the root teachings in christianity go back to indigenous african just poc in general teachings um obviously they were not the ones to come up with it and back to that the bible so the history that I know of the Bible, I could be wrong. So someone, someone correct me if I am wrong, enlighten me, okay? Um, someone commented like, what do you mean we don't know who wrote the Bible? Now, from what I know, there's the Geneva Bible, which was like pre-1600s, and then came the King James Version, which is like a majority one that we use now, right? Um, so that being said, the King James Version was taken from the Geneva, Gen I, mean, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it was taken from that. But still there's collective stories from traditional teachings, which are POC teachings, but they've been kind of whitewashed. Um, for example, at least with the Mormon faith, I've talked about this, where they just smithed some young white man, Caucasian man, <clears throat> um, you know, took the teachings of whatever indigenous teachings he learned, and he said that God cursed the skin of these people because they disobeyed God, right? That's a completely different narrative than what the indigenous teachings teaches, that God 
darken the skin of a certain group of people to show them that hey this is this means that the prophecy of god's going to come true it's a completely different narrative obviously the the derivative is the white patriarchal system and we know what that leads to is the oppression and control of people through race gender religious reasons whatever um so that's kind of systemically like how i gather these things because i kind of like go through that like deep hole right so um the bible is really just a collective of stories when you guys say you know who wrote the bible i want to know what you mean so if you can let me know what you mean in the comments let me know do you mean like god wrote the bible is that what you mean because i'm looking for a more tangible sense right and i know i know in the bible it's like you're not meant to understand everything and things like that but some people need a little bit more tangible evidence that, you know, these things are, and that's where my, my philosophies, ideologies, whatever the hell you want to call them, come from because it meets this, like, a cusp. It's like a cusp between both of them where people who need that tangibleness, this will help them grasp the whole Christianity, religious kind of view of things. You know, now, here's the thing, is people who dive too deep in the religious studies and they believe it so vehemently, like, to their soul, where they become delusional, that goes across the board. That goes across Christianity, anything, you know? So, that's where, you know, I say any belief is up for grabs. If you can be so delusional about Christianity, then be delusional about whatever serves you best. And that is God speaking through you no matter what okay because there is truth to all and that's the beautiful thing about witchcraft that I've always really loved is that and just spiritualism is that you just kind of do what you feel called to do right and you'll hear me call you'll hear me talk a lot about like how I think people are much like plants you know some people are cactus some people are forest trees some people are Amazon forest trees versus pine forest trees you know and we all need different environments to grow. We need different nutrients to grow, et cetera, et cetera. But we can still find our group of people. We can still find the group of plants or whatever that we're meant to grow in. But from my understanding, no one really knows who wrote the Bible. But the more I learn about POC teachings and traditional teachings in the POC community, the more I learn that these Christian beliefs in the King James Version of the Bible come from more indigenous teachings and we've known that right we've known that christianity comes from roots of paganism and so many other things so that's where i wish people would not be so like oh they stole this which actually like okay no i take that back that was, but it's more of like i just wish we could just find a way to relate to each other on differences instead of being so like you know learn from each other okay and in a sense, it's okay to take from other things. There's certain things you shouldn't, right? Um, there are certain uh, practices and stuff that are definitely meant for certain communities. But I think there is no problem with adapting philosophies and stuff like that that you feel called to do, it, as long as you're paying absolute respect towards it as well, you know? I know there's a fine line with that, so, you know... I, I don't know everything about every religion, but I do know there's certain, yeah, you know. So use that to your own discretion. I can't tell you everything within that for your best interest, you know. But I do think that there is an ultimate source at hand, right? And we're going to do some, some podcasts, too, where I want to go, like, hunting for, like, some really, really old Bibles. And just compare them to newer Bibles versus now. So we're going to do that. So if you're interested in the, like these religious studies, feel free to like tag along, subscribe, whatever the heck. Um, there's, there's certain things that I want to read about too that I don't know, like the Torah and things like that. Like in other religions that I, I don't, I haven't read the books, but I'm interested in learning, right? Um, so we're going to explore that. Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. Um, we're going to explore that. So if you like this kind of stuff, then tag along. Love to have you. Um, and like, once again, it's not meant to disrespect anyone or anything. But 
Um, yeah, so so far as I know, the Bible is just a whole bunch of books taken from Egyptian times, Greek, Roman, etc., etc. Um, they're essentially just parables, symbology to help people because back in the time, that's what they did is they used pictures, symbology, stuff like that um, to really get a point across, like to teach a lesson, to teach a anything, a hard to understand concept so um yeah and once again like if you have any other different belief i i would love to hear it. i don't know all these but i would love to i had a friend who was muslim growing up and i would love to learn more about that i would love to learn more about jewish religions just all of them because they all have similar stories to them right so that's where it gets me questioning it makes me wonder you know and I, I just really do think that we as humans become gods, and you can consider these gods aliens, right? We can say the term is interchangeable, just like prayer is manifestation. And that's why, like, you'll hear me like, I don't really pray over my food because genuinely, and this is one of my key tips to manifesting is food, uh, but genuinely, I'm just very grateful for the food because. I make conscious food decisions that I'm very grateful for because I never got the opportunity to make those decisions on a daily basis. Like, for instance, feeding my dogs. Like, I feed them a chicken and rice kind of recipe that I make. And every day I'm just so happy to make it. I'm humming and singing and I just love the act of making food for them. And I even just say, like, oh, I'm so grateful I can make this food for you guys and they're so excited. So it's, in the Bible it says it's really about what's in your heart god knows so god whatever you want to call it god spirit spaghetti monster ultimate whatever it knows what's in your heart and you don't have to do these things that are like get on your knees and pray you know i just think that's more of like trying to beat in obedience and stuff like that and for me, I just don't like that. I grew up being Mormon, and that's like the way of life. But it, it it was a struggle for me because, A, I felt like when I prayed, I wasn't praying right because I have rheumatoid arthritis, right? So a lot of times it would be on my knees. My knees would be really swollen, my hips, whatever. And so I couldn't get down on my knees and pray, and I felt like I was praying wrong and that, like, no matter what, like, I, my prayers weren't being answered and blah, blah. Now I know that's not how it works. It really is what's in your heart. So a lot of times when I eat, I'm just very excited because if I go out to eat, and that's where moderation comes into play because moderation actually helps keep gratitude in balance, I guess, so to speak. Um, because when you become too over abundant in many things, you become, you know, a little greedy, a little gluttonous, and gluttony doesn't have to be just food. Gluttony can really truly look like material items, just like an over excess, right? Um, and you start being a little too materialistic, covetous, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's where moderation and balance is so important. And you know, there's teachings that relay this in the Bible, but it doesn't have to relay in a sense that this is some man in the sky telling you what to do. And there's this girl on TikTok, she was like, you know, if there was a religion where it was like, she has risen, she is queen, like, we'd be like, hell yeah, you know, and it's true. So I get, I get the patriarchal view of it, and the thing that I believe with that is that women are gods, like I said, more importantly, POC women are the called gods children to raise a collective consciousness, and there's a set of envy with that. From the other opposite end in my belief which is no needed because they're both very vital important parts of raising the consciousness and um yeah and i just think truly the patriarchal way was to suppress that and now things have become off balance and it's not so much about men being in power or women being in power it's more about balancing that power men have their strengths women have their strengths I wouldn't say we even have flaws. It's just that we're meant to do certain things. Like, you, one of my favorite quotes is from Einstein, I think, and it's, you don't judge a fish's ability to climb a tree. And I've always thought that because my brother growing up, I think, um, 
he's a really special person to me. You'll hear me mention him a lot. He kind of dis not kind of he did straight up disown our family, which is great on him. There's no I don't speak with that with any anger or anything. Good on him. Like he just kind of cut off. We both went through a lot of abuse, so I get it. Um, now, I haven't cut off my family because I decided to stay in foster care, whereas he decided to go back to them. I didn't want to go back to my family because I needed to heal from what had happened, and I didn't want... I knew that what I was craving, they weren't able to give me. My brother didn't so much make that connection. So now this is his period of kind of healing and stuff. So i hella proud of him. Like, fuck yeah. But he was one of the smartest people I knew growing up. But he struggled in school. And whereas I was very, I got great grades, like, except math. But I had no no problem, no trouble at all. Math and then chemistry was a bad one. Um, but other than that, like, I didn't struggle at all. And so he was always, like, you know, looked at in our family as, like, someone with learning disability and abilities whatever but me I never really saw him as that because he would sit there and now I know the term is called reverse engineering but he would essentially reverse engineer things at like seven eight nine ten like incredible and not only that he would build like these in intricate Lego designs just by using the box the picture on the box he would not use the instructions so he was so gifted, so smart, so talented. It's just that in school, the way they were forcing him to study just didn't click with him. And I wish they would have worked with him better because he he probably would have just really excelled in school if they did work with him better. Um, but you don't judge, you know, people's abilities because they might be gifted in an area that you would have no ability to touch, you know. And so my brother really changed a lot of how I viewed people in that sense and it it's not necessarily you wouldn't consider like if a if a fish can't run you don't consider that a flaw right it's just that's not the area it's meant to be you know so I wish people would look at themselves like that that you're meant to be in the specific environment and being authentic to you and loving who you are will be putting you into these specific environments that are really meant to just catapult your growth and that's really what the bible speaks is just being really loving and you know un uh judgmental and just knowing that we are ultimately on our own path you know and when you truly love yourself you know you've done things that just fucking suck okay and then you realize oh shit everybody has and then when you see people doing things that fucking suck you don't although they fucking suck <laughs> you don't really sit there and be like wow you know fuck that person piece of blah. you don't start fights with them you just kind of look at them with a little more grace and compassion at a certain point and i think that's when anger starts subsiding and you start really filling yourself with love which sounds so corny and that's what people say is god fill yourself with god Anyway, um, no, but, <laughs> yeah, so, but that's what they mean. God is just love. God is just another term to convey love. And the things that poison our body can be energetically speaking, and those would be demons and things like that. And so that's why you have to be really careful about, you know, because your thoughts are so, so strongly, um, manipulated I don't know if that's the right word um you know subconsciously we don't even realize what's going on right and I'll get into energy more in another another video because I have to do like a drawing to show you how I see it um but to show you how I see it I think will convey the message even more that how our subconscious internalizes energy and why you should trust your subconscious and your subconscious is god the holy spirit whatever and your subconscious doesn't hurt people okay so that's where people will be like yeah but if you don't believe in god like where do you know your your 
the thing is is when you act with love you don't go out of your way to hurt people you aren't unaliving people you aren't you understand consent you understand respecting people's autonomy you because you are filled with love people who don't do that really aren't filled with god and you see all these pastors and stuff preaching the fact that they're filled with god blah blah and that they should still be able to sin and yes okay you are I can't judge you just like I said you are on your own journey and I hope you get back to connecting with yourself and understanding why you took away someone's free will of life because you know everybody has free will and I don't know how everything works we're not meant to okay so and that's where in my belief you draw boundaries and people have the choice to respect that or not, okay? You love yourself so much that if they do not respect your boundaries, you remove yourself from their presence. That is what it means. And people who, who dictate the opposite, okay? I'm going to draw these boundaries and I'm going to force you to respect them. Those are people that are not truly filled with, you know, um, what can you call it? Like what's the good word for it um like unjudgmental love like they you know that they've they've they're at their they're in the journey they're i don't know at what part but you know those are the people that really embody the light of jesus and things like that jesus as a matter of fact did not preach organized religion did not preach politics he hung out with the people that were deemed the undesirables of society and and truth be told that's kind of what i find myself doing because those are the people who don't judge they they themselves go through so much and they've been through so much that they just know it's a sense of knowing real recognizes real right jesus suffered a lot and he he hung around people who he knew suffered because there's a level of understanding and a level of non-judgmental and people like that don't need much in life because they realize that the love of the Lord, the love of life, the love of that comes from here, just loving yourself, is so great when you finally encounter it. And that's the whole journey is to get you back to God. So whether or not you have unalived someone, blah, 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 you know, if you've really been delivered, you know, things like that. I don't like using that terminology because I shut down during that terminology because I grew up Mormon and you know the religious trauma and stuff like that um it can really be triggering so i don't i don't truly believe in those words when i say them that's why i use them like that and say them with such an expressive tone um i i just use those because those are terms that are widely used and it conveys that message a little bit more but i don't like saying it much like i don't like saying all oh, the vibe <laughs> like i try to not be too far on either side just so i can get this message across so that people really ultimately i don't care if you believe in god i don't care if you believe in the satanic whatever if you are god blah blah whatever the point of it is is to love yourself when you love yourself you make decisions differently you choose people in your life differently you respect yourself you Every decision you make is for the best interest of you and people can deem that as selfish, but in reality, the energy wise is better for the people around you and people who choose themselves understand that. And while it seems, it seems selfish, that's where that whole like, okay, they don't owe you anything and it sucks to hear that. It really does. But the thing is, is it's not that you have faulted in any way or you don't, you're undeserving in any way. It's just that you haven't unlocked the mindset that has unlocked the idea that you are deserving of it. So, for instance, even if you believed in God, do you think he would bless you with a million dollars out of nowhere? Probably not. Okay, manifesting God doesn't matter what you believe in. Um... So it is ultimately about subconscious, your energy, and believing in yourself. And there's... God is... We are made in God's image. We are God. You know, we... Jesus died for our sins, so there's no possible way to truly sin. We have free will in this life, and the free will is meant to get us to learn how to be better people. And even if you come into this life being someone who just, you know, 
unalives someone and then you un you die, you know. Many people are like, wow, that's a terrible person. Why were they even, if God was real, why would he put, it? it's about the energy. If, if God is real, if he isn't real, it doesn't matter. It's about the energy that comes with it. That is that person who is what you would deem as full of darkness, full of evil, full of demon, whatever you want to deem it as negativity, whatever. That is meant to propel some sort of positive energy. While we don't see it in this lifetime, you can't see wind, but you can see when it hits, you know, something. But when it's in the air just flowing, you can't really see it. You can't see cold. You can't, I mean, sometimes you can see cold. You can't really see heat, but sometimes you can see heat, right? So, like, there's ways this energy does manifest. A lot of times we think it's too woo-woo and we excuse it. But nonetheless, much like in our lives, darkness is put there to bring light into perspective, right? So, people could say, you know, pro-life and pro-choice both serve its purpose, weirdly enough. Um, pro-choice is so strong, and but pro-life serves this purpose of you know maybe we should be more conscious about who we share our body with because we are deserving of people who only want to foster the best in us and if become impregnated by a said person then if we were choosing the people who were best for us that would create the best environment for a little johnny a little whatever lady julianetta <laughs> uh you know what i mean like Instead of choosing people out of trauma, attachment, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. so there's there's a certain like both serve their purpose, and that's why I really I hate I don't hate but I don't like when people feel like they need to choose a side. Both serve their purpose. There's rights and wrongs to both. Okay, you don't have to choose a side. You can really be standing in the middle and not okay not for everything. Like some people, I really do believe that some people stand in the middle because they. They don't want to be, you know, interfering with things and stuff like that. But it's more of, like I say, there's truth to everything, right? And I'll use ACOB for example. Do I think ACOB? Yes, but no. Um, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of cops that are great people that would help you if you needed, that would not abuse their power, etc., etc. However, those same people are in a employment business thing that employs the vast majority of people who do abuse their power. Much like, you know, when you attend a Mormon church and choose to become Mormon, are you one of the bad Mormons? Maybe not. But you are upholding policies that are put in place by these groups of people that like to suppress other groups. Oppress, whatever the word is. Um... I think there's a problem with that. So that's where like sometimes being on the line is okay. Sometimes it's not. And that's where being on the line or being on the line and not on the line. Like there's a paradox with everything, right? So, you know, people are going to come for me no matter what. Um, my opinion is not right nor wrong. But I do see the, the positives to both. Because we ourselves are polarizing. We ourselves are an electromagnetic current. And... Magnetic is the key word, also electric, because everything around us is energy and we are just conductors of that energy and you get to choose the energy you operate at, right? And so let me circle back to what I was saying. Like when I was single and stuff, I'd be feeling so full of love and like so ready to like share this feeling with another man and then they'd fuck me over, right? Now I know that that feeling is the feeling I'm supposed to be operating at. I, like I can share with people, but I don't need to give it all just to one person. I can literally give it to as many people as I want. And that's what I do online. I know it sounds corny, but that's why I like to talk about this stuff online because I want people to know that no matter what background that they are in, no matter what race, gender, skin color, blah, blah, that they are important and that recognizing their light within, whether you want to call that God, authenticity, the Holy Spirit, your subconscious, whatever you want to call it, recognizing that power within is what the elites don't want us to do because that's going to help you manifest everything you want and deserve and it's going to deconstruct these systems put into place because these systems put into place are meant to shut down us empowering ourselves and so that's where protests they've never worked they're not going to work 
um, you know, being violent is not going to work. So really what's truly going to work, and this is why they didn't want the lockdown in my belief, is doing the inner work. Um, inner work means finding God. Whether you believe finding God is you, finding Gandalf God, or whatever. I would like to believe, um, you know, there is a sky daddy, but I think patriarchal stems from daddy issues. They want a daddy in the sky so bad. Um, which is fine. I get it, you know? And the, I, I use that in terms of manifesting that, okay, if you want to believe there's a daddy in the sky and he's the perfect dad, then anytime you ask for money, just trust you're going to somehow get the opportunity for that money to come in somehow. Just trust. It's as if you have the perfect dad handing over money to you. If you want to envision it that way, okay? And that's where I, I, I don't care what background you come from. And that's where I want to learn more about what different backgrounds there are. So that way I can correlate this in a way to you finding your inner self, your inner desires, your inner wants, everything. Your authentic you. And the more authentic, the more you love the parts that you shame yourself about, hide away, blah, blah, the more you fill yourself with love instead of shame and guilt and negative energy. And like, as I said, we are literally just antennas, okay? When I was younger, I had a EMG done, electromagnetic gram or something, and they just stick a giant needle in your fucking muscle. And you have to like flex your muscle and it reads the electricity going through that muscle. The reason they did that is because they were trying to figure out if I had like joint issues or like a muscular dystrophy. So to rule out muscular dystrophy, if I had muscular dystrophy, there would be no electrical signal signals being sh shown on the screen because your muscles can't produce as much. You have problems flexing and keeping muscle tone and stuff like that. So anyway, but that's when I learned that there's like electricity in our body. I was like, that's fucking nuts. Um, you know, so that was 14, 15, and there's small things through my childhood that really just, like, stuck with me, and that really made me resonate, like, oh, shit, we are full of electricity, and stuff like that, static shock, you know, so we are really just an antenna, and we are here to receive, re just receive, and some people are really put here just to be the catalyst. Why do babies get cancer? Because it's meant to be the catalyst, Okay. I'll figure out the connection somehow, maybe, I don't know, and even if I do figure out a connection, is it right? Who fucking knows? I won't know until I die. Um, and so, until I fully die. I have actually already died. Um, but, nonetheless, that's a different story. But, uh, is God real? Yes and no. God can be whatever you make it. Prayer is meditation. Is prayer real? Yes and no. It depends. If you're someone who vehemently despises religion and the words that are connotated towards their symbolism and everything, you would say, no, prayer does not exist. God does not exist. Satan does not exist. Okay, but in the terms of energy, Satan exists. Demons exist. Prayer exists. It's meditation. It's negative energy. It's positive energy. And that's where instead of focusing on our differences, we need to focus how we can really relate to one another and just learn to love each other. And fill yourself with God. <laughs> no, fill yourself with love, okay? If God were anything, he would be love. Love is what, as corny as it is, makes the world go round. And I will use Monsters, Inc. always as an example because they put the symbolism in our face. Whether you not believe it, I believe it, okay? I always say the Pentagon has directed billions dollars worth of movies. Um, I believe there's a list of which movies. I don't know which ones. But, do I want another coffee after this? What time is it? I don't know. Um, but, I gotta earn rent. Also, thank you everyone, for real. Like, this has been one of my best months yet, and this was my birthday month. So, I'm working on rent right now, but I'm actually, like, ahead. Usually when I work on rent, I have, like, zero dollars in the bank. Um, so, I'm really grateful, because I have bills coming up, and I have money in my bank to pay my bills. And I'm hoping this month I'll be able to get a little bit ahead on my rent. I want to pay 3k instead of 2500 um, So that way I can clear out my account and um, make sure that August I'm just starting clear. So I'm just so grateful, you guys, for real. Um, I know it's a little bit ironic that I talk about this stuff because my platforms that you can sub to are like pretty risque. Just know that some people feel empowered through different ways. Now you can sell, you can support me for free, just through YouTube. 
stuff like that. Normal people stuff, you can support me just normally. If you want to donate, feel free. I appreciate those who donate, but I like taking risque pictures, but I will not do it for free. Um, people can pay me for them. People already sexualize me even if I wore a potato sack, you know, so I might as well get paid for it. And if you want to do it, you can pay me for it. So anyway, thank you though, for real. Everyone who does this helps me allow to allow me to take care of myself. My health has been the best it's ever been in nine years. That's because, I know it's because of like me, but really I have, I can't tell y'all how much I, the people in my stream were specific to this because my doctor, I needed a wheelchair at a point. I, it, I couldn't even lay down, it was so painful. And he would not prescribe me a wheelchair, he would not prescribe me any kind of uh, physical therapy or anything. So one of my stream mates actually ended up getting me my scooter and that was the biggest catalyst once again to how I was able to heal myself because finally I could get into the kitchen and give myself the food that I knew would feed my body and heal my body. And so finally I got on that road and because Mark, shout out to Mark, because Mark did that, um, is a big reason why I healed myself. And then Destroyer, he got me the soursop tea and the turmeric drink that I drink every day now. And if it weren't for him, because I was struggling financially, my OF had gotten taken down. I was earning at that point, I was like six, seven K comfortably, like just taking a few pics here and there, a few videos every month. But I was very comfortable and now I lost the platform for almost a year and now it's back. So I have to build it back up, but we'll get there. I'm not too like concerned. It just happens randomly. I'm aware of that at this point, but I am so grateful for y'all because next month Spudgy has like a cyst removal, a lumpectomy, so funny word, um, but it's about 2k. Um, I'm about 4,500 away from paying off all my debt and then I got rent to take care of this month and well every month, but I've never been on top of my bills like this and the fact that my platform wasn't around and I've been getting this done and then I just got my platform back, I'm very excited. And I'm very stoked and so beyond grateful for those who, um, you know, sub to me. And once again, like, I, I am not, like, I'm not trying to say with these ideas that I bring to the interwebs that I'm, like, right in any sense. Really what I want to do is I really want people to find what makes them happy. Even people who have narcissistic, narcissistic disorders, even people who were serial killers and rapists and stuff like that. And I really hate the fact that I feel compassion towards people like that, but I really think it's important to understand that these are people who more than likely at some point were failed, I believe. And that could even be inter utero, okay? Um, and it's our job to use those people as a catalyst to understand what we can do better for children because children really are the key to the world. Um, so cute little babies but <laughs> but uh i just you know my biggest question whenever i meet people and i've it's always been funny to me because nobody really whenever i ask this like everybody's always weirded out by it i'll ask this to strangers at bars and stuff when i used to go to bars i don't anymore but occasionally i want to but i don't really want to talk to anyone i like to observe at bars and i've come to understand that people go to bars to, like bump pee pees together i don't want to do that i just want to drink a beer and watch everyone be weird um <laughs> So, but I like to ask people, like, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do, you know? And it's funny because a lot of people think that they have to have some divine purpose, but believe it or not, God's purpose for you here is just to be happy. You being happy infects other people because the way that makes you, what makes you happy is unique to you. And there is someone out there that sees the way that you are happy and they needed to see that because they felt alone in the ways that they needed to be happy. Like, I was really sick and for a bit, it's very isolating when you have a chronic illness, if you know, you know. But it just felt really good to connect with people online who had rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune illnesses. I was like, what the hell? Like, this is so cool, you know? And so it makes you feel like you have a community and people are meant to be community driven and stuff like that, really. And, you know, that's, even if you find communities of sexual offenders, I think what would be a great um, social experiment is to find the common factors in these people's childhoods. I'd be willing to bet every single one of them was sexually abused by a family member um, or a close family friend. It always seems to be that way. 
um, people who are sexually abused, it's either one or the other. They're either, they repeat the pattern or they're vehemently against the pattern. Like they're the ones out there, you know, uh, trying to spread awareness, standing up for the rights of victims, etc., etc. So, which makes sense. Um, but once again, there's that, it's, it's the positive and the negative, the catalyst that's needed, like, just so that we don't keep, we understand what these actions that we do to children do when they grow up and to not do these, not to not allow those cycles to continue. And that's where the black sheeps, the, the cycle breakers are usually the people who find me. It's people who it's either one or the other, the people who've broken these cycles and they understand where I'm talking from and they they get it, you know? Or the people who um, they want to uphold these cycles and they get really triggered by what I say, what I look like, and stuff like that. Um, so, nonetheless, a lot of this is the foundation of how I have gone about becoming confident, building my life, and things like that. And that's why I'm coming into my channel with starting off with this does this have anything to do with food a little bit but no i want to go to restaurants and eat you know but i'm starting off and like i said you guys are going to kind of see me find my my niche and i love talking about this stuff i talk about this stuff on my twitch and i don't think i'll talk about it on tiktok anymore just because tiktok is so sensitive um i was talking about how specifically with poc community how i found it ironic that really the root is envy and um, even down to like the women's hair, you know, granted POC, can I say black women? Um, black women, they have the big hair, right? And I know they cornrowed and braided in certain ways for maps and, you know, things of that sort, right? Sorts. Um, but what I do have to say with it is another thing, right? In today's world, we are, they're embracing their natural hair more. But maybe like 10 years ago, like their natural hair was unprofessional, but it's because of white people standards in the workplace, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I find it ironic when you trace it back to back then that the people who are suppressing the fluffy, beautiful, magical hair were the people who were literally trying to emulate it. So white pe white women were, you know, ugh, demonizing the hair, or like, ugh, you know, making fun of being envious. I think it's jealousy, of course, envious. Um, because every, every you know, girl with super curly hair knows because it's not even, I know there's white women who have curly hair, but for the most part, I don't know how those genes play out. I don't know if curly hair stems from African American ancestry or what. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So I'm just speaking out of my ass a little uneducated here. Okay. So, but I love to learn. So once again, if there's more knowledge that I have not obtained and you know more about what I'm saying and you, you get what I'm saying, but maybe a few things are wrong or, you know, tell me, I love to learn. So, but what I'm connecting the dots with what I've learned so far is that like the irony is that back in the day, I don't know how to say this, but back in the day, these women, these white women with straight hair, like mine, very straight, whatever, would um and dark hair because we all we, we all know how the white women with dark hair get the men going right so i think the dark hair and the dark features is very i think this is like not the right term but the way they used to say it is exotic right it's very like mysterious and beautiful and like wow you know captivating um so white women being the like, I don't know, whatever, envious counterpart um, of the white men paying attention because the amount of people back then that really wanted the other race, but they had to keep it on the hush-hush, and then when they were impregnated or a man impregnated a slave, then it was, like, end of their life because it was just, like, unheard of to interracially mix, right? Anyway, back to the root of what I was saying. It's hard to say this because I know it's going to offend people. And I don't even know if it's right. Um, but it's just kind of something I've noticed, okay? So I'm just going to do it. Here we go. <laughs> Forgive me. Okay, so I think it's ironic that back in the day, white women would make fun of 
black women's hair which is it can be straight it can be curly it can be long it can be short in a matter of seconds minute it's magical right and so they're saying okay this looks unprofessional this looks bad you know cover up your hair braid it down whatever and i know these were protective styles as well so you know i understand that but i do think it's ironic that like with the afros and stuff that are so beautiful i think natural hair is so beautiful and um you know during the oppression of the hairstyles of poc community the same people who would like mock the big hair were the ones teasing their hair okay so like in the hairspray era like the 50s right why were afros seen as less professional by the white people but then white women are over here teasing their hair like to big badonkin heights and tell me that doesn't look fucking stupid you look like you have okay anyway um <laughs> So, that's why I think it's ironic that you're going to say that's unprofessional, you're going to say that looks bad, you're going to say that's less in societal terms, systematic terms, but here you are trying to emulate the same thing, and you can't even do it. You can't even do it right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so that's kind of like a little bit of what I believe, right? Do I think anything bad about white women in their hair? No, I am literally a white lady with white lady hair. Okay, um, so I don't think there's anything bad about either side. I think we should learn to celebrate each other's differences and not compete and not be envious. And that's why in the Bible it tells you not to covet because there's beauty to both sides. There's beauty to the dark. There's beauty to the light, right? There's nighttime, you get such a different side of things versus when it's daytime like there there really is no comparison like you could try to compare them but you could go on and on because there really is no comparison so it's it's really like comparing a fish's ability to climb a tree you know so there's my belief in god i'm probably going to talk more about this but a lot of it ties into um you know, manifesting, prayer, and things like that. So, once again, if there's things that I don't know about that maybe I could be enlightened about, do tell me in the comments. Just be respectful about it. But really, truly, what I believe is that ultimately the Bible, God, all religions are teaching love because it's about an energy. And feeling that good energy is what brings things in for yourself that you want. And that's how these billionaires get whatever they want because they learn that the victim mentality you got to stay away from people who are always like oh woe is me oh bad things happen to me you gotta stay away from that and then because it's infectious and then you really like it's really just about envisioning what you want and knowing you deserve what you want etc and while you might think those billionaires don't deserve that they do and some people like you know they think maybe they think they deserve to be a billionaire but I don't think deep down they think they think they could get it like they could be a billion does that make sense so if you really believe you can be a billionaire if you really think that you deserve to be a billionaire you can be um and you know I have a whole process with that but nonetheless I think you know when people think God in the patriarchal sense it doesn't make sense but when you think of it in the energy sense it and you can say energy, energy is the same as quantum, okay? The Holy Bible and cy Psycho-Cybernetics, I would say would be the two Holy Grail books of life that will just really help catapult your learnings of energy and how to manifest and get things that you want. Because it, I think everyone's core belief, we are a little scared of hell. We are a little scared of what if there is a God, you know? Um, it's all about coping with life and whatnot and dealing with our mistakes and everything like that so it kind of it helps both sides you know and I I try my best to be a good person and this is really for people who try their best to be a good person and you don't need religion to make you a good person but understanding that there's more to being a good person than giving the shirt off your back okay and that's what I want people to understand I used to be a people pleaser heavily um and I think a lot of people are but the best way to get what you want is to stop people pleasing. You can give to people um, without giving them the resources that you actually need, okay? And 
I know a lot of people will think that it looks bad if they don't give to people when they have stuff, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Because um, at the end of the day, when you start being able to make a lot for yourself and whatever, I guarantee you those people that you really care about, you're going to be circling back and you're going to be helping them big time when you do make it big. And I always preach of it like this. Like... When you are struggling, you need to wait until God, source, is, this is source, just around, it's just a waterfall, is pouring into you. Wait till your cup is full. We all know that this bottom part is pretty much spit, right? You don't want to be giving your family member this, you know, if anything, if you really love them, you want them to have the better part of the drink, right? The freshest of the fresh. 